afternoon all this is uh Kurt Cafty with uh five hacking tips um today i want to cover um malware development and a um basically do a review of sector 7 institute and their malware development essentials class and also show how basically you can leverage this to get into windows side uh, client um, attack and malware development uh, basically, um, if you look at um, look at a lot of uh, people that have a, a big hesitancy towards getting into malware development, it's because it kind of comes with um, I don't know. It just I, for for some people, to me, it sounds radical because uh, simply because you can develop malware or find ways to inject um dlls or libraries or processes into um, existing executables and it's a great client-side attack um, let me share my screen with you so here um here's a here's a slide for it so i took the malware development essentials and then the malware development intermediate and then the uh, the windows evasion all three of those classes today i'm just going to cover malware development essentials and why it's such a good first step into the whole subject of Windows, uh, Microsoft Foundation classes, Win32, C programming. Um, all of the code that comes with the class runs as is. Um, so I'm pretty much going to go ahead and give my review, and I'm just going to say it's it's a good out of five stars. It's a good 4.75, if not five. Um, simply because the, the, the 0.25 that I'm accounting for is the fact that uh, the virtual box system keeps on shutting down uh, like after an hour. And that's a Microsoft licensing thing. That's nothing against Sector 7. But what I did do was, um, I, uh, I'm going to jump down, is I discovered that if you install Commando VM, you pretty much get all the tools that you'll need uh, there might be an exception like PE Bear may not be in Commando VM. And then another thing I asked up on LinkedIn, nobody responded. I asked in some other groups um, in Facebook and even on IRC chat, nobody responded. But um, I ran Commando VM in Windows 11 and it went through fine. There were a couple of errors. I followed up on it and it was software update or two. It was a couple of them. Um, that was about four weeks ago. So I don't remember exactly what, but it wasn't that big of a deal. But I hit the ground running um, in, in doing malware development, even on that system. Um, things that are introduced in the class, in the malware development essentials class, are, well, there's various tools, but basically Process Hacker. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that before, but that is a uh, basically a tool It's basically a tool. Uh, I have it displayed here on the right side of my screen. And it's a tool that, it's like Task Manager, except it provides a lot more detail. And you can go into like a process. Let me go into Firefox here. And it, it breaks down. Like if you want to look at the DLLs that are running in there, if you look at modules. Also, you can look at memory. So if you run something, you get like a memory response when you're trying to debug something, you can see where it's getting injected. And that kind of thing. Um, the, uh, the I don't know why I wrote reviews there, but basically um, it's Red Team. The title of the course is Red Team Operator, and then Malware Development Essentials course. It's 199 bucks, and it's well worth it. Even just the code templates are worth it. But the videos that come with it and the support that comes with it are also well worth it. And it's ongoing. It's not just a period of time. He, he does updates to it, or they do updates to it. Um, who should take the course? People who are interested in malware development for Windows, or, or Windows client attack site, or even endpoint attack site. That will not just client. Um, you really need to know how to read C. Um, so I bounce in and out of C throughout my life, and I'm comfortable with it. So that's why I kind of stepped into this. But that being said, um, you know, I always keep around good, not good, but some kind of C reference because things do change. So I picked this up a couple of years ago. It's a packet. 
and it's called C programming. I'm not really into packet books, but it's interesting that they've come out with a couple of C um, programming books that are very basic and easy to understand uh, when you've got something, and then and it, and it's also pretty comprehensive. So when you've got something even um, a little deeper, it th this one explains it pretty well. And then on another side, like if you want to get into like network programming and, and creating bots and then like what to do with the network or the network side when you're actually writing malware. Um, this is another one. It's network programming with C. It's packet it's by uh, Lewis Van Winkle. And then uh, the C programming, learn C programming is actually by uh, Jeffrey uh, Zuhay. That's the Z U H A Y. Um, the, uh, and I mean, that's a good start. It's very Linux based. It's GCC based. And that's about all you need because the way that they introduce the course and, and the way, the comprehensive way that he introduces what we're doing, um, during the course, uh, is priceless because you can actually start out with just a very basic understanding of C at least understanding how C pointers work and how, you know, how C strings work and that kind of thing. You could actually get really far in this. Um, and then also, you know, last but not least, this is very much of a CTF or red teamer kind of skill. It's not just a, a regular like network or web application pen tester kind of skill. It's, it's a, it's a little deeper into, um, into the internals of a target system. And in this case, it's very windows focused, but yet, the code is in C, the calls, you know, they're, they're MSC, C++ calls and that kind of thing. But the, the, the very basic code presented is, um, is, is as C as it can be. I'll put it that way. And um, let, me, let me show you, uh, for example. So um, toward the end of the course, uh, there, was a, uh, um, there was a project. So you had to combine a couple of things let me let me go ahead sorry i didn't bring that back up but let me um that said let's go into for example this is like the course outline he goes into what the portable executable is down here there's a zzz but i've asked many questions there they're very responsive response like within 24 hours most times like by the time i wake up the day. um he goes into droppers, obfuscation, hiding, backdoors, Trojans, all of that. But toward the end, he goes into uh, code injection and then, you know, direct uh, code injection um, into the various payloads, either data or resources, that kind of thing. And then also it goes into DLL hooking and you know, loading a DLL into a remote process. And that, for me, was the hooker. That took me into malware development um, intermediate, which is the next course. Because when you look at the syllabus of that course, it's about various ways of hooking DLLs and doing it um, some, some pretty obscure ways that, that make it very effective. And combined with other things, like, you know, obfuscation and hiding through encryption. And there's two different encryption options down here. So let me show you the real deal. Um, if we go down here, so I've got, um, this is a program I set up um, and I, I took it directly from the course uh, and, and from the template. I augmented it a little bit, but I have it like hooking into Firefox and then going off to a remote server. So I'm going to, That's the remote server that's listening right now. Um, I have it listening on port 8080, uh, and it's, it's one out there um, on the internet. It's public. It's a listener that I have a split running on. And then I'm, I'm going to go in here and go dir. So what I've done is I've already compiled. You can see here it's compile uh, dll dot bat. I well I'll just go ahead and do it just for completeness. So there it compiles. That's, you know, 
he, he walks you in the course they walk you through what that bat file is about and all of the different things and the different ways that you can switch from a like a console app to a, a windows app to, to be a more evasive and all kinds of different stuff like that um and then if we look at uh so i when you inject a dll you actually have uh you have the dll itself and then you you export the library and then um and then you have something called the dll and and attach the dll to a uh, a, a given process and in this case I, i'm going to use firefox.exe so i'm also going to compile injector there you go it compiled so we're all good there so if i go in there i should have inject dll.exe and do i have firefox running i do have firefox running. i'm sorry this is probably set up for notepad oh that was right i couldn't get it running on uh, firefox something because it's windows 11 so let's go back to that and there it shows that it injected into that process and if i go up to here you can see that it's already loaded onto my local stage from interpreter if i say get uid yeah so that's the same as my as my laptop down here i'm connected across the internet. and one thing i want to add um to that is um basically that this particular kind of knowledge um combined with uh, a bash bunny or a rubber ducky so uh, you know with with this you're pulling a payload and you might have usb memory read write access so it's a much stiffer attack um versus with this you can actually put the payload in in the memory card and have PowerShell uh, just pull it some way or PowerShell because this is basically you're using the keyboard interface so try and have PowerShell pull the payload off of, off of the internet if that's possible um, besides all the loot that you get just from gathering it um, but I mean this kind of malware that's very low level um, combined with with physical attacks are very dangerous and needless to say with combined with phishing attacks because essentially what you do here is you're, you're dealing with i mean i'll even share screen and but i mean if you look in notepad um you can see that the code is, is very minimal and do not ping me and ask me for a copy of the code because I'm not going to give it to you. That comes with the class. Sign up for it. Um, and um, I mean, it's 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 very low level and it's very uh, it, it's a lot easier to fly under the radar with it, with it. Put it that way, especially when you apply other methods to it that you learn in the later course. Um, that's it for today. Um, thank you for uh, giving me your time. Subscribe like and uh most of all um yeah keep the suggestions coming and keep the support coming i appreciate it have a good day